welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie and I'm the mom to these arrows here. And our arrows are 10, six, and four. And if you didn't already know, we are a homeschooling family, a blended family, and hopefully soon to be a homesteading family. If you're new, welcome. Nice to see you. I hope you stick around and hit that subscribe button as well as that bell so you can get notifications on when I post, which is every Tuesday and Thursday. And don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Uh, today's video is actually a part two of homeschool Q&A, which was actually requested that I do. Um, so if you have not seen that, head on over to some previous videos and watch that one. So. Let's just jump right in because these are a little detailed. Uh, number 18 is where we left off. How do you structure your school year? Breaks, holidays, those things. So we actually school year round, which means I have an entire year, 365 days to fit in 180 days, which is required by my state. Um, now I take days off. I give myself grace, which is why we school year round so that I can have needed breaks sometimes. Now for Thanksgiving, we usually take a full week off. We take the entire week off because sometimes our schedule differs since my husband is a fireman. We're not sure when he'll be off, when we'll be celebrating and when we'll see family. Um, thanks. I mean, for Christmas, we usually take the entire month of December off from actual curriculum work. Now we spend pretty much the entire month of December learning about the birth of Christ, we do learn about just biblical aspect of Christmas, and um, that's pretty much it. We do, we just enjoy the time together. We make Christmas crafts, we bake together sometimes, um, just make Christmas de decorations, and we just spend a lot of time with family. We have birthdays, we have three family birthdays in December, two friends, no, four family birthdays in December, two friends birthdays in December, plus Christmas, plus time with family for Christmas. So December is a very busy month for us. Um, so we just don't school during that. And then it, we have our scheduled vacation time that we take off. And then other than that, we take breaks as needed. If we need to school on a Saturday because we took too many days off that week, we will, or a Sunday. Um, but it's just a loose, loose structured schedule. We know we need this many days and we will get them done, but we're going to give ourselves time to also enjoy life along the way. Number 19, how do you determine where your child is level wise? Are there tests or list of things a child should know at each age? All right. So most curriculums that you look at have assessments for your child to take. Now, I encourage you, if you're looking at a specific curriculum, to take their assessment. Don't take a master books assessment and then buy the good and the beautiful. Don't take the good and the beautiful assessment and then buy easy peasy because they're not the same. A level one on curriculum X may not be level one on curriculum Y. They, they are all different, just like our children are different. So you have to take an assessment with each curriculum. Now, if the curriculum does not offer you an assessment, then you can go and find an assessment online to kind of get a roundabout where your child is and what they know already, and then search that curriculum and look at what they're learning on each level and go from there. Um, now, when it comes to, um, let's see, knowing where your child, like, I'm sorry, if it, when it comes to a list of things where your child should be. Your child is where your child is. That's just all there is to it. You do not need to compare your child to any other student, any other sibling. You don't need to compare your child to public school standards. Your child knows what they know. Start on the level that they are, and as long as they progress, everything else will fall into place. They will continue to learn as long as you continue to push and allow them to explore and allow them to lead you on what they're interested in because then they're gonna love the learning. So don't worry about what, I, what anyone else says a child should know at this point and just go on what your child does know and build from there. That is gonna benefit your child best. All right, question number 20. 
How do you take time for yourself? This person did say, currently they love their free time while the kids are in preschool and they're afraid of losing that. So I do leave the kids with dad and go do something that's fun for me. And you can laugh at me, but I love going to Dollar Tree. I just do. So I will go do that once a week couple days a month, whatever. Even if I'm not buying anything, I just like to go and browse. And I will take that time and, and do that. I will schedule something for myself, no matter when it might be, and I will make sure that I do it. My kids do not get to determine if I get to do something for myself. I get to take care of myself, just like I'm required to take care of them. So I, I will just, you know, push that and make sure that it happens. Um, like I said, I do allow them to visit grandparents, and when they do, I do whatever I want to do during that time to make sure I have it for myself. Again, I let them do independent play. I have sensory bins, little gummy, gummy bears, they're plastic bears, but my four-year-old calls them gummy bears. Um, let them play with that. Spit everywhere. Um, let them play with certain things and give myself a break to do whatever it is that I need to do. If I need to do something during the day, I will plan it on when my husband is home so that I can just go and not feel guilty about whatever it is that I need to do. All right, number 21. What are important Georgia requirements? Now, just like I mentioned in the first video, you need to go to the website hslga.org, O-R-G, um, and look at what your state requires. So for Georgia, you have to file a letter of intent yearly. You have to have a high school diploma. You have to have proof that your child is your child that you're teaching. You cannot teach or homeschool a child that is not yours legally. You can tutor, but you cannot teach. Um, you are required to teach 180 days. You are required to have four and a half hours of learning time a day. And again, you are required to test after the, or at the end of the third year, third grade year, and then every three years after that. There are a few more requirements, but those were the basic, you know, you need to know these. But again, go to that website, I'll link it below, and make sure that you are following your state laws because there are some that are a lot more strict than, say, Georgia's is. Um, all right, the next one. What are some of your favorite and most useful resources? Well, number one is YouTube <laughs> um, and Amazon Prime and Netflix because there are a ton of educational shows that I can teach until I'm blue in the face, but my, especially my youngest, he needs to see. And so we go to things like when we're learning science, DIY Sci. We can find that on YouTube, Amazon Prime. When they see the experiments happening and they see them in a big way, they learn and retain the information so much more. So that is a huge resource of mine. Um, homeschool mom groups, love that, especially Christian homeschool mom groups that are like-minded, that are wanting the same things for their kids. That is a huge resource for me because if I'm feeling down, I can see hope because I can see some posts on there for children that have grown up, graduated, or are only 16 years old and are published. Like you can see that this, if this is what God called you to do, he's going to pull you through it. You're going to do well. Um, also just books, like having a lot of books and letting your kids pull books and letting them learn from those books is a huge resource for me. Don't underestimate the high value of just a book. Um, have a co-op or a weekly get together with, with friends that also homeschool. You don't have to do educational things through that, but that is a really good resource because now you're getting time with another adult. Your children are getting time with other children. They're getting to play or they're learning together and you're allowing yourself some time to adjust. And that is a huge, it is a good resource. You need that. Um, libraries, museums, things like that. You can go on field trips and still learn, but get out of the house and not do the same thing every day. Um, and then manipulatives. That's a different type of resource, but manipulatives. Like I mentioned the gummy bears, like, whoops. They're not really gummy bears, they're just plastic bears, like things like that. Or, um, I'm sure you can get these somewhere. I made, I made these, but we've got um, letters and just numbers that they can, whoops, that they can put their, their hands on and use and 
Play-Doh and blocks and magnet tiles and magnet sticks and 10 grams. Like all the things are really good resources for you to have because again, when you need time away, you can give your kids something to do and they can learn and use their imagination and have independent play, but you can use it with your schoolwork. So they are, it is really good. Those are really good resources to also have. Um, let's see, just a few more. Have your have any of your children expressed interest in going to public school? If so, how have you handled it? Um, my oldest is the only one that has ever been to public school. She went to public school through, uh, well, I guess just say second grade because third grade was pretty much, you know, all online. Um, and then we did fourth grade all homeschool. Um, and so now we're fifth grade and homeschool again. Now she has asked. The only reason she had for wanting to go back is because she just wanted to be with her friends all day instead of her brothers all day. I can understand that, you know? Um, now, Cayman has asked, but he's only asked because his friends talk about going to school because they rode a bus. And, and you know, it's different. And the, the way we handled it is we've explained to them that this is what God has called us to do at this moment. So, we are going to follow and do and, and obey. And, you know, we're going to continue to pray about it. And if we feel at a later date that God has called us to do something else, we will because we know God knows best. We also know that it's not just about our wants. It's about what is necessary. And for Joshua and I as parents, it is necessary for our children to have a foundation in Christ and to also love learning. And so this is where we're going to start all of those things. And it is what's more important for us than them wanting to do something that other people are doing because that's not always best. Um, let's see. What is the hardest part of homeschooling? Um, not being able to afford every curriculum that I want to try. But no, seriously, it really is choosing which is best because I am a teacher at heart, so I want it all. But I have to remind myself that I'm not choosing a curriculum for me. I am choosing a curriculum for each individual child. And that may mean I need three different curriculums because they're not the same. And that's okay. A curriculum that works for Lana may not work for Cayman. And it may work for Malachi. Or it may not work for any of them after we give it a try. So finding a curriculum that is actually tailored for each individual child and not what I want because it's pretty or because it's popular or because this other person's using it or because I want to do something that someone else is doing. Finding the curriculum that's perfect or as close to perfect as it can be for each individual child is the hardest thing for me. But that is literally a trial and error. It is research, 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 which you're not always going to be able to find the answer with research. You're going to have to give it a try and see if it works. So it is, that is the number one hardest thing for me when it comes to homeschooling. All right, and last but not least, was your husband always on board? Well, it was actually his idea. I never, ever, 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 ever thought that I would homeschool because I loved public school. I was a teacher's pet. <laughs> I knew I wanted to be a teacher when I grew up since I was five years old. That has been the only thing I've ever wanted to be besides a mother and a wife. And so I just knew I was always going to teach. Therefore, when my kids got old enough to go to school, they were going to school because I was going to teach. And it was his idea to give it a try. And I am very grateful that he pushed it, not in a difficult way, but he pushed it on me to say, we need to give this a try. This, this is what's gonna be best. We can do all these things. We can do this and our children can, you know, have a good foundation in the process. If he did not do that, we wouldn't be where we are. And since he did, I'm never looking back. <laughs> um, I am one of those people that will sit here and tell you that I plan to homeschool my children until they graduate. He is not on board with that. I'm not saying he's not on board, but he doesn't sure how he feels about that yet. He thinks we may put them in high school and we'll see when the time comes. But as of right now, I don't see that happening because I don't see things getting any better between now and when they're in high school. But yeah, so he has always been on board and he still is 100% on board and he is very supportive and will, 
just gives me the reins on what curriculum we choose and how we run the school day. He helps and, and you know, helps individually with the kids as needed. And yeah, it runs really smooth with the routine and the way we have things going now. So yeah, that's it. That uh, Those are the questions that I have. Again, if you have any other questions, you can drop them below. And if I have enough questions, I can either do more or I'll just answer them on my Instagram stories or even do a YouTube short since they have those now. But I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to pop that bell so that you'll know when I do post. Until next time, y'all have a wonderful day and we'll see you then.